Hey guys, how's it going? Lima Griffin here with part 5 of our Multirotormania.com and Fortis Airframes Tricopter build. Before we get started, I just want to give these guys a shout out. Uh, Fortis Airframes, one of our sponsors for this Tricopter build, they supplied the frame and all of the components, uh, the landing gear and you know the camera mounts and the anti-vibration mount and all that stuff that goes along with it. Check out their website, they've got a ton of cool products. They're actually coming out with a quadcopter as well, based off of their Titan frame. So check them out. Also, Multirotormania.com. They were our electronic sponsor for this build. They provided all the electronics, motor speed controllers, flight board. Uh, we used the Dragonfly 32 flight board from them. Really great customer service. Awesome people to work with. So thanks to you guys for the help with the build. And now on to what we're going to talk about today, which is LEDs. Uh, we're going to talk about the WS2812 LEDs, setting them up, wiring, and programming them in CleanFlight to make them do a variety of different things that CleanFlight has them set up to do on your multirotor. So the first thing we'll talk about is the actual LEDs. And WS2812 LEDs usually come in a strip format like this right here, and they're pre-soldered to a strip, and they have soldering pads along the edges that you can land your wires on. And you can actually cut them in between the strips right here to lengthen them however you want. Well, we've got a few of them set up on the tricopter, but I wanted to give you this as a reference so I can show you how you're gonna wire them. The first thing to know is they're five volt powered. So what you can do is pull one of your speed controllers, pull the uh, positive and negative off of it if it has an internal VEC, and what I did is ran it to a power distribution board, and then I pulled all my 5 volt and my ground power from there. And as you can see, you just pull one wire and land it right on the 5 volt of the first LED, and it will actually internally jump to the next LEDs in the sequence. And if you have LEDs after this, and it's harder for you to pull another wire from your power source, you can actually come out of the other end and wire into the next 5 volt in the series. So, I've got mine wired like this. Now, one thing to note, whenever you plug them into 5 volts and ground, they will not turn on. These LEDs don't work on power alone. They need a digital signal or a command uh, to tell them what color to turn on. So don't think they've broken if they don't turn on whenever you plug them up. Now, as far as the signal that we're going to give them, the way this works with the Dragonfly 32 speed controller and clean flight is you have to have PPM enabled. And what PPM does, it's going to free up all of your I.O. channels uh, on your input side of your board, and you're only going to use the first channel for your receiver. And what that means is you'll have all the rest of the channels free to use for other things such as GPS and, of course, LEDs. Now, the LEDs in Clean Flight are programmed to work off of channel 5. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull a signal wire from the signal pin of channel 5, and you're going to want to run it to your first digital input on your first strip of LEDs. And when I say first, first is totally up to you. You choose which one you want to wire first. Just know that whichever one you wire first, all the ones on that strip are going to be in sequential order. So this will be number one. And then of course, this will be number two. And then when you pull out of here, what you're going to do is run this wire from there up to your next digital input on your next LED strip. So your digital input will jump across to the output to the next input and then the output you'll have to bring into the next input. And pay attention because they will not work if you wire them backwards, if you wire them outputs to inputs. You'll have to wire them input, I'm sorry, you'll have to wire the first one to the input, not to the output. They're um, basically a diode so they only work in one direction but anyway there's an arrow here you can see on the board that tells you what direction they're supposed to go really hard to mess up but anyway if you were having more LEDs more strips whatnot you would just continue out of here to the next LED strip and then the same thing all the way until you're done now one thing to know at the end of it if this was all the LEDs that I was gonna wire you don't have to do anything with any of this stuff here. You can just leave it alone. You don't have to bring the output back into anything. You can just leave a wire off of it. 
Now what I've done is I've wired a wire from the last digital output back up to the center of my tricopter just to have an easy connection point if I decide to add some LEDs later on I don't have to try to pull a wire back through there so I've brought it back to the middle. Now that we've got them wired up let's jump into clean flight and let's talk about setting them up and programming them to do exactly what you want or exactly what you decide you want them to do. So here in clean flight what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and connect to our tricopter. Once we're connected we're going to go to the configuration tab and there's a few things you're going to have to enable here. The first thing is RX PPM. This is what I was talking about earlier where you have to set it up to free up your input channels and one thing to note you will have to have a PPM um, PPM enabled receiver and transmitter for your radio. You can't use PPM with just any receiver and transmitter. Another thing you're going to have to set up over here in the bottom corner under other features you're going to enable the LED strip command. This is what converts your input channel 5 to an output to work with the LEDs. Once you're done remember to hit save and reboot to save your changes and then we're going to jump over to the LED strip tab. Once we're in the LED strip tab you can see I have mine already set up. We're going to go ahead and just clear all and this is going to wipe our slate clean. Now a quick overview these are your different functions that you can assign to the LEDs. These are the different orientations and colors. This right here is how you set up your wiring and then you can clear everything. Now the clean flight being a 32-bit board has the ability to run up to 32 LEDs. So keep that in mind when you're wiring it, it will not do more. You can do less, you can do odd numbers, even numbers, whatever you want, you just have to do under 33. You have to do 32 or less. This display here is actually an overhead grid of your multi-rotor. So think of it as a helicopter view or a view from the sky what you want to do and I'll show you back in paint here we'll go ahead and lay out my tricopter so what I have are my arms and then I have my tail and the way I've got my LEDs I started here and I've got 0, 1, 2, and 3 well it's really hard to draw with this little tip and then we got 4 five, six, and seven. And then we've got eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then in the front of my tricopter I actually have twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, which is actually a total of sixteen LEDs. So there's your overhead view of how I've got them and you want to pay attention when you're wiring them up to remember which order that you wired them in because that will come back later when it's time to program them. So now what I want to do is duplicate that on my overhead grid display. So we're going to click on wire ordering mode and then we're going to go ahead and click the boxes and it will automatically assign the first available number or the next available number to the box. So one or zero, one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12, 13, 14, 15. There you have it. Now what we want to do is you want to give them a direction. So all of my LEDs that are on the underside are facing down. Or I'm sorry, all the LEDs on the arms are facing down. So what you do is you click the D button and that tells the program that they are actually facing the ground. If they were facing up you would click the U and then the north, south, east and west are in a direction in relation to the frame. So like these two 13 and 14 are actually facing the front of my tricopter so that would be north. You see it assigns an arrow facing forward and then these two on the sides here are actually facing their respective sides. So there you have it, there's a setup for the direction and the ordering of the LEDs. Now we want to give them some functions. Well my first two LEDs in the front here, I want them to be headlights. So we're going to click on color, I want them to stay static, one color, never changing. We're going to click on color and then we're going to go one. That's going to be white. Same thing with this one, color 
and white. Now our side ones, I want these to be a few things. I want them to be, I'll go ahead and hold control so we can highlight multiples. I want them to be a battery warning and then I also want them to be an arm state so that I can look at my tricopter and see if it's armed. Now as far as these here on the outsides, I want them to also be an arm state. And what arm state will do is it'll be green whenever you're not armed and blue whenever they're armed. Now I already have all those selected so I'm going to go ahead and select the rest of these and I'm going to select my two side ones here and I'm going to set them up, oh they're already set up for that so we'll go ahead and unselect those. I want my two side ones to be a warning and what that's going to be all of my LEDs are now except for the two front ones all of my LEDs are now warning LEDs and what that means is they're going to flash red whenever my battery starts to die or, or I get below my predetermined voltage. Now on my outside LEDs I want them to be indicator LEDs and what that does is as I'm moving my right joystick they'll actually flash in relation to what direction I'm moving it and the further I move it away from center the faster they flash. And then my rear LEDs, these two here, actually all four of them, I'm going to make those throttle LEDs. And what that will do, as I'm giving it throttle, they will actually change colors from a dark purple to a light red or a bright yellow. And it's emulating like an afterburner effect where the further you're on the gas, the brighter it gets. So that's pretty much it for how I want to lay my LEDs out. Um, once you're done with that, you're going to want to click save, and you'll see it says EE Prom saved. That let you know that lets you know that the flight controller took it, and there you go. Now you can test them out, see how they look, and if you don't like it, hook back up to it, change colors, whatnot. Really simple, really easy to do. You can also do CLI programming on your uh, in your CLI tab to set them up. Uh, this is much easier and I found that it works perfectly fine. I, I haven't needed that for anything that I couldn't do in this. I'm sure there's more you can do, but this suits me just fine. So now, take a second and check out my tricopter flying at night with all my LEDs enabled. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope this helped you out when it comes to wiring your WS2812 LEDs on your Dragonfly 32 flight controller or any other 32-bit NAS platform flight controller working with CleanFlight. Take care guys, check out more of my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out my sponsors Fortis Airframes and Multirotormania.com, our Facebook fan page facebook.com slash rcscaleadventures. And we'll see you guys next time on the 6th edition of our Tricopter build.